Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday News Show. Hugo's not here this week, so you've just got me, but we have a packed selection of climbing news for you guys. Now, as the coronavirus continues to spread throughout the world, it's starting to affect our climbing community and potentially the IFSC World Cup events in China. The IFSC have released a statement saying that World Cup events in April, so Wuzhang, Chongqing and the Asian Games, might be postponed, moved or even cancelled if necessary. There is concern about infection if athletes and officials travel to China. The press release indicates the IFSC's support for people dealing with the virus and go on to say how the health of the athletes and people working directly and indirectly is their main concern. The IFSC has shipped a supply of 10,000 breathing masks to China as a gesture of support. Now, this is definitely news, but we're going to have to wait and see how things pan out. Obviously, the coronavirus is in its early stages and April is a way away. So the IFSC are just starting to put out the warnings that those events might be cancelled. It's lovely to see them sending those breathing masks over to China and obviously their concern is for the local people as well as the athletes and the officials. But with many things at the moment, including Grand Prix, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that virus. So stay tuned for more news coming soon. Now, Drew Ruana is on this show a lot at the moment and guess what? He's back. Drew, who sent his hardest boulder problem last week, is back climbing 8C with an ascent of the nest in Red Rocks. This route took some serious dedication as it takes about an hour and 20 minutes with pads on to approach. There's a write up on aa.nu and they also suggest that Drew is a possible tripartite Olympic ticket winner if Canada qualifies for the Pan American Championships. Drew in the Olympics? Yes, please. It would be very cool to see Drew in the Olympics if that's possible for ha to happen. I really love it when outdoor or mainly outdoor climbers come into that indoor climbing world. Al although we know that Drew is a proper indoor climber as well. I think, I think he came 13th in the combined championship. So fingers crossed for him uh, and hopefully we'll see him in the summer in Japan. Now, climber Ikapu first did his first 9A 20 years ago, and to celebrate that anniversary, he's ticked off another. Ika, 42 years old, is no stranger to hard sport routes. As well as Action Direct, he's climbed multiple 9As over the years and pushed himself further with the scent of Neat de Bruises 9A plus slash 9B and Big Men 9A plus. He's put up a new route called La Nave de los Locos in Mallorca, Spain. He's grading it 9A and there's a great video on his YouTube channel looking back at the last 20 years. There's a link in the description below. What a legend of the sport. Imagine doing that for that long, 20 years of climbing 9A or harder, super cool. And that video I mentioned in the voiceover, it's a lovely look back. And one of the things that is great about it is just the pure quality of the camera work in it. It starts way back in the day on Action Direct, proper shaky cameras, bit of VHS style sort of like uh, static interference. And then by the end of it, he's a Red Bull athlete. He's obviously nice shiny productions and still climbing as hard as he ever did before. It's a very cool video and I recommend you go and check that out. Now, even by Patagonia standards, they are having a terrible season this year with hardly any weather windows, but one team has managed to get something done. Italian mountain guides Alessandro Bao and Giovanni Zaccaria have climbed a new line on Cerro Pier Giorgio, a huge granite monolith behind Fitzroy and Cerro Torre. The team spent seven hours approaching the mountain and climbed a 200 meter thin ice line up the mountain. Following this, they joined an established route to reach the summit ice mushroom. The weather in Patagonia is shocking at the moment. There's quite a few teams out there trying to get stuff done. For example, Luca Lindic, he's in base camp. Uh, talked to him yesterday. He was saying, fingers crossed for some weather windows and hopefully we'll see some more big Patagonia sends in the next couple of weeks. But who knows? Now, Dock Masters is a competition that takes place in the Netherlands. It's super fun. It's got loads of high quality, high class athletes, a lot of prize money, and it's coming up this weekend. The comp attracts some top class athletes and looks after them well, offering accommodation and free entry to 40 IFSC boulderers and or the top 40 ranked IFSC boulderers. So basically anyone who's any good. There's a live stream that will be on the Epic TV website, so keep an eye out for it.
That competition was a lot of fun last year. Uh, I think Eddie Folks did the commentating. It was great. It's going to be on the website. And to find it, all you need to do is scroll down to the hand-picked section. And it'll be embedded there. There'll be the semi-finals and the finals on there. Obviously, that link won't work when you first click on it. It'll only work when the event starts. So make sure you check the times before logging on. Now, it's time for the 9B Counter. <laughs> Uh, I've got nothing, basically. Uh, I've got nothing at all. We've got the uh, 9B counter, the 8C counter. And then? The E10 slash whatever American trad grade counter. And then? And the women's 9A counter. And no one has done anything. <whistles> Drew would have got on the old 8C counter, but obviously we're 8C plus counter this year to save us some paper mainly. Uh, now, you guys have been asking about the competition winners. Uh, apologies, we haven't got back to you on that. We are picking the winner today. So next week, stay tuned for who has won that competition. So it's someone winning the 9B counter and the 8C plus counter, the uh, Seven Sisters chalk, the Epic TV bottle. Anything else, T Teresa? Nothing? That's it. Okay. Loads of prizes uh, to win. Uh, so that will be announced next week. So hang on for that and appreciate your patience. And athletes of the world, come on, you've got four counters now. Step it up. <laughs> Let's talk about media on the Epic TV website. And the man filming this very show, Matafi, he has done an amazing uh, film, the last episode of the La Sportiva Living Legends series. This features Fabian Boul. It's beautifully shot. He's an absolute wad of an athlete. So check out this little teaser. I don't want to put myself in one discipline or give me a name of like I'm now an alpinist or I'm now a boulder. I think it's just a climber, just like to play in the mountains. Motivation is basically from a line, no matter if it's a bouldering line that I'm inspired or if it's a mountain that has a beautiful line. To be able to train for a certain objective, I need to know what I want to reach. That is on our YouTube channel, uh, the main Epic TV YouTube channel. It's on the website. It's very easy to find. We're putting up teasers all the time. Go to our Instagram to check out little videos of that. We're super proud of it. Uh, thank you, Matt, for your work. That was awesome. Uh, make sure you check out the rest of the series as well, because uh, that's it now. That's done. That's the whole thing finished, and it's been a lot of fun filming it and promoting it. So thank you very much to everyone involved in that project. Now, talking about shop stuff, we've had a big restock. Scarpa, La Sportiva are back in stock, as is Lattice Training Rungs. So as you guys know, uh, I'm following along this training plan. It was totally out of stock for a couple of weeks. It's now back in, so you can buy the training plan and the Lattice Rungs for a fantastic package deal. And you can follow along with me and my vlogs to do the training. Uh, so if you fancy getting involved in that, that's back in stock now. And also, so solid clothing. This takes a little bit of personal taste. It's a bit retro, it's a bit funky. The colors are interesting, but I kind of like it. I'm gonna get uh, a bright green pair of tights turning up very soon that I'm gonna wear. Uh, there's an article on the Epic TV website looking at retro gear, and this definitely fits into that. So if you fancy checking out some retro gear styles, there's a link in the description below so you can get some product tips and some style advice. I didn't write the article, of course. I mean, as you can tell, I'm, I'm hardly rocking the retro right now, uh, and style isn't really my thing. But thank you to Teresa who wrote that article. Second bit of media I want to talk about is Vibram. Now, shoe resoling is one of those things that's a little bit underground. You don't really hear much about it. But I went and visited a man called Eduardo, and he runs a Vibram shop somewhere in the heart of Italy, and he resoles climbing shoes. So I spent the day with him looking at, honestly, the art form that is doing this. Check out this little teaser. The first step in the resoling process is a visual inspection of the shoes, as not all climbing shoes can be repaired. 
My Scarpa VSRs are right on the edge of what's possible to fix. Don't wait for holes to develop in your shoes, repair them before the damage goes through the outer rand. Every climbing shoe has a different shape. Eduardo needs to pick the correct climbing mould to fit inside the shoe so he can attach the rubber. Without this, the shoes will not be rigid enough to work on. The shoes are placed under a special infrared heating lamp. The heat reactivates the glue between the sole and the upper, turning it into a softer substance that's easy to manipulate. After two to three minutes, the shoes are ready. That video is on YouTube, it's on the website, and it's an interesting look at how this process happens. And you can really turn something that's like old, that you throw in the bin, into a new climbing shoe. It's a cool thing to see. Check that out, link in the description below. And I think that's it. I think, oh no, comment of the week, comment of the week. Apologies, comment of the week. <laughs> comment of the week. There's that. Right, uh, so the comment of the week this week is from, hang on. All right, so comment of the week this week is from Randomly Omnipotent. Stunning name, mate. And he simply says, is your flow the same guy who did the editing work on The Great War YouTube series. Let's ask Flo. No. He did do Prometheus though. There you go, comments answered, I think. Uh, thank you for sending the comments in. If you don't know how this works, you comment on the new show and then we look at the new show and we find the funniest, weirdest, downright strangest comment uh, and we shout those guys out. So thank you very much to everyone who's commentating. Comment commenting? Commenting, commenting. Uh, Hugo will be back next week uh, for another packed week. Cheers for watching guys, thank you very much and I'll see you soon.